If you haven't subscribed already, ring that bell to get notified when new movies are posted. Hey, Chris Young here from HomeKit Geek. So we have the community tab now, and I asked you guys what product you wanted to see reviewed this week. And out of the 23 of you who responded, uh, well, it was actually a tie between LifeX Beam and the Xiaoyan door and window sensor. And, uh, well, you know, I flipped a coin. So LifeX Beam won. As a reminder, if you want to pick one of these up, there is an affiliates code, Amazon affiliates code down below in the video details, as well as other information. So the LifeX Beam, let's get to it. It is a Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz product. It is 1200 lumens per six beams. So for the entire six beams, it's 1200 lumens. So if you do the math there, it's about 200 uh, lumens per beam, if my math is correct. What's really cool about this is the color zones. There is actually 10 separate color zones per beam, right? So um, a total of 60 different color combinations that you can put, program, draw, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to call it when I'm drawing on a wall with lights. It's kind of cool. Um, there's 16 million colors, so you've got an entire, a, a huge palette here to be able to, to play with. This product comes with six beams and the one corner piece. Um, it's called beam because you can actually uh, turn corners with it, right? So, which is really cool. And um, also, LifeX app features, you know, that LifeX has done a really, really great job on all the extended things that you can do with the lights, the different um, effects. This is definitely Apple HomeKit compatible, as well as Amazon's Madam A, as well as Google Assistant, as well as the Abode Smart Home direct integration, as well as, well, they just have integrated with uh, a ton of people. So, let's check it out. So before we get into the unboxing, um, I want to show you guys the finished product here. You can see the beam. It goes up and then it goes to both the left and the right above my windowsill there. Um, it's really, really cool. I do really like the effect. I like the fact that I get all these different colors and shades around uh, my office. Um, that's what the beam can do for you. It can give you all these kind of set this mood lighting, which um, honestly, that's what LifeX really excels with. Let's take a look at the unboxing. So here we are with the LifeX Beam box. You can see cutting edge illumination. Ha ha. Great little pun there because it's got a bunch of edges on this box. You can see on the outside of the box, um, they indicate exactly what you're getting. You're getting a colored lights that can kind of bend around the corner. Um, they've got the nice LifeX logo cut out into the box there, which is kind of cool. Um, you've got clearly marked on the side of the box, worked with Apple HomeKit, Google Assistant, Amazon Madam A, as well as Nest. Um, and like I said, if you look at the LifeX website, there's a whole bunch of other integrations. They do the Scout security system, um, as well as the Abode uh, security system, which is kind of nice. Um, again, it's a it's a box, right? Uh, well indicated. We like that. So once we get this thing opened up here, um, it's actually kind of cool for a, a protection mechanism. They've got this... Um, kind of a foam um, on top of this, just to make sure that the lights don't bounce around, that uh, any shocks are absorbed, which is really, um, it's really nice. I don't imagine that you, they're going to see many of these um, broken while shipping. While shipping. Um, choose your layouts. So again, this is what's cool about this, is because you've got that corner piece, you can do just a straight kind of an L shape. You could do a, a T or an inverted T, um, a whole bunch of different shapes with that, right? So that's kind of cool. Uh, place it before powering. Know where you want to put it, right? So that's kind of important. And one thing that I, I definitely uh, did want to play around with is I kind of laid it out on my floor first uh, before taking on, uh, trying to figure out what kind of shape I wanted to put on the wall, um, looking at the wall. So looking at the device here, you can see uh, it's it's actually kind of cool is that these just connect together. That's the, the power connector. So if you just kind of connect these um, one with the other and line those up, power just goes through. So that's kind of cool, to be honest. So let's get the rest of these out of the box here, see if we can find that corner piece. There is a lot in this box. I guess, again, there is six beams. So we'll get all those unpacked. And uh, somewhere in here, there will be the corner piece as well. So we're now getting into just the uh, the little box that's packed in there as well, and it's a double-sided box, and you've got a couple things here. Um, you've got what I think is the going to be the power supply, the home kit code, all that kind of stuff will be in this. Um, and then we've probably got the adapter for uh, US plugs. We've got our home kit code, right? So 
It's going to work with HomeKit, so you need the HomeKit code. We have our power adapter here, so this is just going to go into the uh, the bottom of the adapter that's attached uh, to the first beam in line. Um, you can see here this is for international use, of course, and uh, I've got the North American plug. Let me get this out of the thing. Oh, look at that. There we go. That other piece there is the, the corner piece. So let's get the North American plug out here and click this in place. So it just goes in there and clicks. So if, again, that adapter could be used in uh, other other uh, parts of the world that use something other than the standard 110 uh, North American prongs. And this here, this is the magic piece. Um, so you can see here, it's got three of those little uh, three pin connectors. You can see that, and that's gonna be the power. That's gonna allow us um, power to come in on one side and power to go out into either the left or the right side, uh, either one. Right, so this is what gives us the ability to kind of go around corners um, and give the beam a different shape on the wall. So you can also see again that three three power connector that's going to convert the standard uh, one ten EC over into there we go a little closer. So you can see that it's really just a contact. So this is almost um, almost reminds me of the mag locks that go on the the Apple MacBooks, right? So it's it's almost that kind of a form factor. And uh, essentially, it is magnetic, right? You can, it's just going to uh, clip onto here, uh, onto the edge, and we will be good to go once we apply power. So I have kind of turned off the lights in the light box, and whoa, look at that. Um, as soon as you tap that magnetic, the, the power strip on, it just powers up, just like that. Right, so I'm, I'm gonna be able to do the same thing, and what's cool is the, uh, the corner piece here, actually powers up as well. One thing that I did notice though is that um, once it does its initial power up, it kind of detects what um, what parts of the beam are detected. So as you can see, I'm not getting power onto either the uh, the corner piece or the secondary beam here. It's because it's, it's already done some kind of an internal negotiation and um, it's already figured out that I only need enough power for one beam. So if I just lay this down and I unplug and plug it back in, you can see it's gonna go through that initial synchronization again. The light goes all the way up the beam and there we go, we've got two beams in our beam, right? So that's kind of cool, two beams in the beam. All the light goes through, it works just as intended. If I'm gonna go and put the second on here, I think uh, the control piece will now go up as well because it's expecting that I've got two connections to go through but if I put the third one in, look at that. That's kind of cool, right? So it's got enough power. Fourth one didn't work. I'll, I'll spoiler alert. So essentially the story here is um, put them all together, then apply power, and it should all work. So in, when I was putting them on the wall, um, I wanted to make sure I had a good connection on all of them. So every time I added another part, another beam um, to my setup, I would unplug it, plug it back in, make sure everything had good contact. Uh, make sure I had power running through the whole line. So looking at the colors, um, it's LifeX. It's bright, it's brilliant, it's saturated. Uh, it's exactly what we would expect from LifeX, right? So this is, there's, there is um, not much more really to say here. Uh, it looks really, really good. It's really bright um, and really saturated, right? So if you're trying to get a mood lighting, I think uh, for the colored lights, LifeX, they're, they're not the cheapest for sure, but they're definitely one of the best. So going into the LifeX app, uh, we're going to connect a new light. So we're just gonna tap on that plus up there. So when we're going through this, we can set it up or we could have set it up directly in Apple HomeKit, but I'm just gonna use the LifeX app um, just, just because we can, right? It really doesn't matter where we go. It, it, um, any device that you add into HomeKit always ends up in the same database. And for LifeX um, and, and other products Life FX, like LifeX that has additional integrations, they're also going to kind of have their own separate database. So no matter where you set it up, you're going to be okay. So LifeX Beam there, okay, cool. We will select that as the one that we're going to select. And I'm going to put that in the My Home, in my HomeKit house. Um, add accessory to network. Of course, I want to add it to the network. The LifeX Beam is a Wi-Fi product, so I'm going to have to add it to the network. So one thing to be kind of aware of here as well is if you're running 2.4 and 5 gigahertz at the same time, it is not unheard of for people to have issues with their products if the uh, if your SSID, if your wireless network name for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz 
are the same name. Now, um, I have it running like that. I haven't had any problems. Uh, but if you do have those problems, you might want to disable the 5 gigahertz temporarily um, just to see what happens. Um, you know, at this point, preparing the lights, so we're using the wireless simple configuration protocol. We're going to be sending that over. You will, of course, notice that I did not type in my Wi-Fi passwords, my pre-shared keys, any of that kind of stuff. That is handled for us, which is really cool. This is getting easier and easier to set this up as we go along. So this is preparing the light now. There we go. If you look in the top left, you can see the LifeX Beam is now added into at least the LifeX app. Um, I'm getting this almost done message up above. So we should be just about done. HomeKit setup issue. Try again. Hmm. So I like to think part of the value I bring you guys is you get to see what I went through, what my experience was, right? Um, no sugar coating. You get to see all exactly what happened when I tried to set this up. It didn't work. I had to try again. Or at least I would have to try again if I was going to add it to Apple HomeKit right now. Um, I actually didn't end up doing that. I just said, you know what? Do I really care right now? I just want to get this thing on the wall, see how it looks, uh, and play around with it a bit. I was more interested in the LifeX side of things anyways. So I actually canceled out of this because I've already got the LifeX Beam up there, right? So I wanted to kind of look at that. Um, I've also seen at times that the firmware that you get on these things out of the factory isn't always um, the most up-to-date, shall we say. And sometimes the issues that you see when adding things is is actually, um, it's a firmware issue, right? So when I encounter things like this, if I can go into uh, the LifeX app or or Hue app, Ikea app, like doesn't even matter who the vendor is at this point. This is not pointing, singling anyone out. Um, you just kind of go into the app, add the device anyways, and see if there are any firmware updates. And generally that will resolve the issues. So while all that was going on, I was basically just going in, creating a, a name. So I'm going to call it, put it in the My Office group, um, give the name to the Beam. It's going to be My Office uh, LifeX Beam, I think is what I will call this. I like to like make things very explicit. Um, I'm going to be using groups afterwards anyway. So for voice activation, I don't even really care what the, the specific device name is because I'm going to group it with a, a, a bunch of other devices. And that's about it. We are pretty much good to go. And now um, you can add another light or you can use a voice service, uh, Amazon, Madame A, Google Assistant, Apple, Siri, and HomeKit. Um, in my case, I've already had Amazon um, and Google, I think both, connected to my LifeX. So I actually don't even have to set those up. I'm just going to have to go into my Google Home app or my Amazon Madam A app. And um, at that point, you know, I don't even have to go in the app. New light named my office LifeX Beam found, right? It is, um, it is that tight of an integration between all these things that as soon as I add a new light, um, it's automatically found by some of the other places, right? HomeKit, not the case. You're going to need the HomeKit code for that. So we're going to click on the Done button there. Um, look for my office LifeX Beam. Look at that. Update the firmware. Just as I suspected, uh, the firmware is out of date. So we're going to do that and then come back and see how things look. So that's going to take, um, you know, a minute, minute and a half, something like that to get it connected. Um, then we can go and we can look in here at Connected Home. Uh, I now have that Pair with Apple HomeKit button as well. So I can just click that uh, Pair button here if I so choose. Which house do I want to put it in? That's going to be the home. We're going to prepare the light here. And now we will see how things go. So we've actually got the uh, HomeKit setup code now. Um, we're able to scan in. This is a good sign. There we go, connecting, make sure it says connected to the power nearby. Accessory added, just like that, right? What did I tell you guys? Sometimes it's just a firmware issue. Um, this is not a perfect world yet. Um, all the devices don't work perfectly together yet, but it's pretty darn good. And um, if you just kind of a little persistence, you will get through this. So we'll do a quick little tour through the LifeX app. This is exactly the same as uh, you guys have seen before. I've done reviews on the uh, LifeX strip, uh, light strip, the LifeX Z strip or Z strip. Um, we've also looked at, I believe, the BR30s uh, in a couple different places. Exactly the same, right? Which is nice. Um, 
I can go in, I can change the colors, I can change the warmth, the brightness. These are full spectrum lights, so they'll do all the way up to 6,500 Kelvins, which means you can use them to help grow your plants to some extent. Um, they're not gonna be, obviously, they're not grow lamps, if you will, but um, they are gonna help a little bit um, as well. You have that day and uh, dusk uh, ability within them to kind of simulate daylight, which for me, um, working out of a home office, I like it. I think it's it's a good thing that my um, natural rhythms, you know, the natural human rhythm to respond to the sun, I get that naturally in my office. You know, I get the, the sun comes up and then gradually over the day, the light starts to get a little bit dimmer. If you're kind of following along in the app, you can change the brightness of certain kinds of days where it's going to go up and, and how it's going to go from one uh, time of day to the other time of day. You can control the days of the week, all that kind of stuff. So you can say, you know, do I want this all the way up um, as high as it can go. I can control, um, you're limited to, to four zones. So kind of you wake up, your day, your evening, and your night. Um, generally, I turn night off. I turn the wake up off because frankly, I don't care. I'm not in my office at that point in time. Um, what else here? Uh, you've of course got the color wheel, uh, which is, I find it really intuitive. Uh, you have the themes. So one thing to kind of be aware of here is I'm on the office. So I'm not gonna be able to get the paint function. But if I flip over from the My Office group over to the, the uh, Office LifeX Beam directly, you'll see that I get this kind of paint function. So I'm just going to tap up here on the My Office LifeX Beam and open up the device, not the group. And you'll see at the top now, um, I've got the actual bars of the beam. So it's a straight line. It doesn't reflect what's actually on my wall. But, you know, hey, it's still pretty cool, right? Um, so I can fill in from here if I click on the paint over on the right. I can then choose and select specific colors and then tap along the top so you can see that yellow in there. Let's put some green in there. Uh, maybe I want to put more of a uh, purpley magenta kind of a color maybe. Um, and then I can really adjust exactly what I want um, for my the LifeX Beam. And this works on the strips as well. It works on the tiles. Really cool. Let's go check out the Apple Home app. So LifeX is one of the best examples of why you're still probably going to have a home app um, your Apple Home app, as well as the Vendors app. If I go over to colors here, um, I can change a single single color. I can't set themes. I can't do the paint thing. There's no dynamic functions within HomeKit that's supported. I can generally turn it on, off, modify the color, modify the bright, brightness, um, and that's about it. Uh, it's, it's enough, and it's consistent among vendors, which, don't get me wrong, I think that's great gives me a single interface uh, to be able to kind of do all my, my macro tasks. But if I want to play around with something specific, I can go into the app. And that really brings us to the end. Um, so the LifeX Beam, it's a LifeX product. I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, I think my personal opinion, they have some of the most uh, saturated lights. You know, if you're looking for a color light just to, to brighten the mood, uh, you can't go wrong with LifeX, in my opinion. Um, Philips Hue is great as well. I like Philips Hue more for the entertainment functions that they can kind of provide. Um, I, again, great product, but different different use cases for me. Wi-Fi, no problems. Um, you know, the setup was a little, little shaky, right? But I got through it. Um, the firmware update was the trick there. Uh, connected to HomeKit, no problem. Able to get there. Uh, I really like this product. Um, I'm seriously looking at more of them. I think the only thing that I would say is a negative about the product is uh, is that wire. So you can kind of even see in the picture there uh, in my office is the wire hanging off the bottom. Um, perhaps it would have been smarter for me to, to kind of modify where that wire goes. Maybe I'll put it up at the top and I'll rewire somehow. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. Um, but that's really the only thing that I don't like about it is um, that wire hanging off the wall. Um, so that could definitely be me. Uh, I will have to see what I can do there. What do you guys think? Uh, is there anything I miss? Any questions, comments? Um, is this something you put in your house? Do you like it? Do you not? Definitely put that in the comments below. Um, other than that, you know the drill. Likes, shares, always appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already. Ring that bell. Get notified the next time there's videos. And if you want to learn how to make your house just a little smarter using Apple HomeKit, do me a favor. Check the video details link and there will be a coupon code on sale for my Udemy class.